This is Hiroja Shive of Satoshi's Treasure Hunters with a happy clue day. So it's been 9th, 5th, so this is recorded September 12th. Seven days, I know. Seven very long days. Um, so happy clue day. The anthem key is out. Let's get into it. So the... Game Makers made an announcement on their official Twitter handle in which they acknowledged they missed the date for uh, the, the launch of the Tezo hunt and that there's going to be a delay. Um, it's appreciated, but kind of a little late. It should have came out on the 10th or the 9th and people would have understood because the Tezo hunt is dealing with smart contracts. Smart contracts are very difficult to do. Uh, there's been issues from the very beginning you can go back all the way to ethereum about the different kinds of smart contracts um, there are some small ones like uh, you know multi uh multi-key uh, wallets are considered smart contracts and they're very simple to do uh, but they're probably the only pretty much in this cryptocurrency space they're, they're pretty much the only smart contracts that have been very successful in their implementations mind you use your air um, it's going to happen with anything, and that's probably the biggest vulnerability with anything. But as far as the actual programming and the utility and the function of that smart contract style, it works. It works. It hasn't, as far as I'm aware, been broken. Now, there's been bad multi sig wallet implementations, but the very core concept of itself has not. Other smart contracts have had problems of the yin yang of implementations and there's been significant progression in the smart contract space from various different uh, projects and companies out there and this is still fairly new um, much of the underlying um, contract structure uh, is new code base so it's, it's code that has never or even code languages has never been tested the test of time um so there's that difficulty they don't have like the 10 20 30 or 40 years of you know back and forth papers and people trying to break it crack it or anything like that to you know with this withstand of just you know bad actors or functions and all, all that nonsense so it's going to be a bit i i wouldn't be surprised if there's not a tazo hunt before the end of the year but anyways back to Satoshi's treasure hunt uh we do have a new clue and it's interesting because a lot of the alternative reality games out there, particularly like the really tech heavy say ones, not like the Pokemon ones or Harry Potter's or those type of games, um, but the really kind of tech savvy ones seem to really bite off the cicada hunt. And I've gathered a bunch of notes and considered doing a video about the cicada um, ARG, but um, I guess now will probably be the time to put it together and launch it but <clears throat> that's where the moth symbol is you know obviously a bite off of is from cicada and i think there's maybe one or two but one really prominent alternate reality game that's kind of tech heavy that i've seen that doesn't bite off cicada and that is the mr robot from the television show for the last four seasons there's been an alternative reality game that does not in fact i in my opinion bite off a cicada at all uh it's pretty technical at times there is some fun stuff within it but um much of his implementation is clue style uh really comes from the cft and other kind of clue or, or computer games that have been out there but as far as the alternative reality aspect it i it doesn't really bite from cicada at all um now maybe some of the mythos about getting like the best individual people if you, you if you follow the Mr. Robot show and about the themes that are going on there, there might be that a little bit. But that's something that's been around within the like the cypherpunk cyberpunk space, that aspect of, you know, uh, computer programming, that philosophy for a long time. So I wouldn't necessarily put that ownership on Sakia. Um but here we have it, a new clue is drop. Uh, let's get into the clue and some little hints that might be helpful for any solves that are happen. So this is the main Satoshi's Treasure website page. 
Okay, so quick clues that have not been solved. We got the Earth key that's still available and has not been declared to be solved. We have the next one is the checkerboard key. No one has stated that they have solved it, though there is a clan, a private clan that quit that has. But again, you don't have to release that key or those clues. So for now, it's still available. I'm going to say it's not solved for sure, but it's a possibility, you know, there's a lot of private clans out there, so it's a possibility with any of these keys that there's been solutions. But as far as the public clans go, they have not stated that they've solved this. Let's see, the hackathon key is ended. I have not seen any news about the, the, the key and the reward for that. Let's see. The ladder key again, still available. No public solution has been announced. Um, the hidden key has, in fact, um, been solved. And now we are at the, uh, I want to say Sarathic key. This is the clue. Again, um, you have the telegram link. You have this right here, which you have to, this QR code, you have to, again, horizontal, if you will, uh, QR code scan to get the, which is actually the decryptor page. And it's a little different from previous decryptor pages. Uh, you have the uh, Satoshi's treasure hunt icon, the little cat here uh, with a clue of 90 degree angle. And then you have the clue itself, this picture of this moth. And it looks like, I guess you could say a feminine symbol or Greek symbol that has appeared in other clues in the past. Let's enhance. And then you have this 37.5 degrees, I want to say Celsius. So that is a hint if you will. Now this style is very similar in the, the painting style, the acrylic style of Coin Artist, who did the um, Legends of Toshi Nakamoto paintings, particularly uh, the one flame was a bit, the one that I did the video for and I will have um, a link at the end of the video for that. Uh, maybe there was a cooperation or maybe they just kind of bite her style here a little bit. But this is what this, this particular uh, painting style reminds me of. You got these kind of like, you know, like ribbon strokes here. Uh, I imagine this is something that you probably have to download and run through imaging programs as well to kind of figure out. Um, but there's this. Uh, the decryptor page. Uh, let's get to that. What makes it different is you have this word phrase right here. Um, using the, the vinegar cipher with the standard 26 letter alphabet, you must determine the correct keyword from the clue provided and apply it to the to this instructions to yield the password required. Okay, so let's break down some terms that they've given us. First off, the name of the key, Cathonic. If you go to um, Webster's Dictionary, and I also have a link to uh, the Wikipedia page about this term. It's uh, relating to the underworld, and if you look at the imaging, it has kind of like this gray and chaotic, you know, background here with these blues and dark imaging. Um, so there's that. Um, I'm sure this Greek symbol probably has to do with death as well. No, uh, cat. Totally rule the internet, don't they? So, did you know that Chthonic might seem to seem a lofty and learned word, but it's actually pretty down to earth in its origin and meaning. It comes from Chthon, which means earth in Greek, and associated with things that dwell in or under the earth. It's most commonly used in discussion of mythology, particularly underworld mythology. Hades, Persephone, who reigned over the Underworld of the Greek mythology might be called Chthonic deities, for example, or Chthonic has a broader applications too. It can be used to describe something that resembles a mythological, mythological underworld, uh, Chthonic darkness, and is sometimes used to describe earthly or natural things as opposed to those that are elevated or celestial. Uh, recent examples on the web, some Chthonic texts written during the early to mid-aughts characterize 
character comes down below as a portal to the inner world. <laughs> Social media creation myths. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so there you have it. That might be very helpful to understand that. Uh, the Vinegar Cipher, this is the Wikipedia page, is a method of encrypting alphabet text by using a series of interwoven Caesar ciphers based on the letters of the keyword and pose a form of polyalphabetic substitutions. Okay, so you have that. I do have a page that has the ability to um, decrypt a Vin Cipher. Um, once you figure out what the key is, um, I have a link in the show notes to that. And then this is the moth, the Anthropophala moth is a North American member of the family Saturni. The giant silk moth is a tan colored moth with an average wingspan of 15 centimeters or six inches. Yeah, these boys are pretty big. I've seen them in real life. Uh, the most notable feature of the moth is this large purplish eye spot. And his two hind wings. The eye spots give it the name from the Greek myth of Cyclops or Polyphius. The, spe- the species was first described by Peter Carman in 1776. And the species is widespread in the continental North America with local po- populations found throughout subarctic Canada and the United States. The calibrator can eat 86,000 times its weight as it emerges in a, in a little less than two months. Wow, that's a lot. Um, let's see, conservation, response to threat. So it's a whole Wikipedia page information there. And then this is the cicada image, um, the moth image. This was like a clue as well for the logo. Uh, nobody has been able since the launch of this game, which was 2014, been able to actually find the moth species that this comes from or any picture association so this could be something that may have been freehand designed by the game makers of that no one is certain um but this is the information about cicada itself as uh, or cicada 3301 actually it was 2013 so here we go uh, <clears throat> cicada 301 is a nickname given to the organization that on three occasions is posted a, a set of puzzles to recruit co-bakers ling- ling- linguistics from the public. The first internet puzzle started, oh, way back in 2012. I'm doing really bad time traveling here. January 4th, 2012 on 4chan and ran for approximately one month. A second round began one year later on January 4th, 2013. And a third round following the confirmation of the, fre- of the fresh clues posted on Twitter on January 4th, 2014. The stated intent was to recruit an intelligent individual to prepare a series of puzzles which were to be solved. No new puzzles were published on January 4th, 2015. However, a new clue was posted on Twitter on January 5th, 2016. And in April of 2017, a verified PG sign message was found. Beware false paths. Always verify PG signature from 7835090F. The message explicitly denies the vid- the vid- Visibility of any unsigned puzzles as originally as April 2017. So there hasn't been anything new from the game since then. Um, the actual game itself really is from from um, 2014. That that third puzzle has not been solved. It's been almost five years now. Um, there's you know people still tapping and trying. Um, but there has not yet been a solution to that. There's a lot of, a lot of theories about who's behind the game. Um, there's a, I'll have a link in the show notes to uh, a, a good documentary about the people that play the game and a little bit about the history. It's a little mini documentary. So it's broken up into um, four episodes all together. And you know, if you watch it in one sitting, it's like an hour of your time. Uh, I couldn't find any information about this Greek symbol. Um, I think I have to go through my notes. I'm not as organized as it should be, but you have this here, which I'm sure is very important. And again, you have the degrees here. <clears throat> so there you have it. We have a new clue, a new key to solve. There's a few out there that haven't been solved. So this is another one on the list. Um, 
this seems like to be a very interesting, fun one, a little different, you know, it has, it's like previous clues with images attached to it, but this is, you know, acrylic painting, Greek mythology, um, kind of an ode, if you will, or biting off of uh, a previous a famous ARG game called Cicada 3301. Um, and again, they have the, again, this time span with these clues, which is a bit frustrating. Um, keeping the momentum, keeping, you know, Clay, as I talked about, leasing the public uh, uh, telegram channel, you know, keeping the momentum going, keeping people together, keeping people interested, particularly when you have these geolocation keys to be able to get somebody to maybe be part of your clan that might be in the area, but they ha they dipped out, and so you have a real way to really seriously connect with them, to be able to get out there and get, you know, the, um, the uh, key, if you will, but uh, again, like I said, drop 10 at a time, drop 12 at a time, drop 20 at a time. Let's get this going. We're supposed to have 400 out of a potential 1,000 keys to be able to obtain the, the bounty. So the pace of it is supposed to be for a year, and we're about to go into our sixth month. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so here, here you have it. Um, but here, yeah. So, uh, my name is Arosha Scheib, uh, this is Sophie's Treasure Hunters, and